right, next we have one page management, fractal mechanical network based time domain physical acoustic interface. Okay, great. So that's a good introduction. And good afternoon, everybody. My name is Guangxi, and today I'm going to talk about the modeling of seismic mechanical agent using fractals. Well, some of you, some of you guys might be a little bit unfamiliar with the concept of fractal. So, long story short, the fractal refers to a self-similar structure, which means an object is similar to a part of itself. For example, this picture is not on an eye candy. It's actually, it's actually a fractal. Check out this pedal right here. A part of this pedal, say the small pedal, has a very similar structure as the large pedal itself. And this self-similarity makes it a fractal. So in this study, I'm going to talk about how to use these fractal structures to model the attenuation effect of a U-size model of the Earth's materials. Let's get started from some backgrounds. So, so when you look at some seismic data like this one, you sometimes come across scenarios like this. You have a large area that is <coughs> chaotic, basically. And all the continuous reflectors are gone in this area. So it's probably due to some high attenuation structure, such as a gas tuning. So we have very strong attenuation right here. And in seismology, <coughs> people use the quality factor Q to quantify this attenuation effect. So the lower the, the attenuation, say this is something around 20, the higher the, the, the lower the Q is, the higher the, the stronger the attenuation is. So in such scenario, the classic theory of pure elasticity is not going to work. So in order to understand what's going on right here, we got to accurately model the attenuation effect. In particular, the attenuation has two associated coupling effects, which is amplitude decay and velocity dispersion. The velocity dispersion means the velocity varies with frequencies. As the seismic wave propagates along the, di the distance, the peak becomes smaller and smaller due to the amplitude decay. And also, the, wa the waveform got spread out because of the velocity dispersion. So we got to model these two effects. And the important operation of the cube is that it is frequency independent in the seismic frequency band. So in another word, in this frequency range, about two orders of, fre two orders of frequencies, the Q spectrum is basically flat. And this is supported by many pieces of evidence from lab experiments and field measurements. To model this attenuation uh, phenomenon, people use some physical models, and basically by playing with some finger toys, namely the spring and dash pass. So the spring exhibits an elastic behavior, while the dash pass has a viscous phenomenon. And among this physical mechanical elements, in uh, one of the most popular ones is standard linear solid model, the SLS. So we got this model by connecting the spring and dash pass in this pattern. But the problem of this is that instead of being flat, the Q spectrum has a peak, which is inconsistent with our operation in the frequency range, seismic frequency range. To the other hand, so if uh, material has a constant Q for all the frequencies, then mathematically, we get, it's got to have a complex model written in this form. So C is a, a real constant value, and omega is the angular frequency, and gamma is a small dimensionless parameter, which is related to 1 over Q. For example, when Q is uh, uh, 32, which is married uh, in the field at pure shell, the gamma is something around 0.03, so it's pretty small. And for the elastic case, purely, purely elastic case, Q is going to approach infinity. In this case, the gamma reduces to zero. The, problem, the downside of this model is that it lacks physical interpretation. Although it can measure our observation in the seismic frequency range, which is perfectly. So the objective of this study is going to be twofold. First, we want to provide a physical motivation for this mathematical constant, constant Q model. And on top of it, we derive a new viscal acoustic wave equation to model the wave, wave fields in attenuated media accurately and efficiently. 
to, to tackle the first one, you propose this fractal mechanical network model to make the flat cube feasible. So let's get started from a very simple geometry. So a mechanical element X, a mechanical element X is a simple parallel connection of Y and Z. When Y is a dashboard and Z is a spring, and then X is going to be this so-called Kelvin Fuchs model. And unfortunately, just like the SLS we just mentioned, it also has a peak in the Q spectrum. It's not flat. Now we introduce the idea of fractal. So for each branch of X, each branch of X will serially connect an element which is identical to itself. So in this case, when Y is still a dash part and Z is a spring, X is going to be something like this. It's an uh, infinite tree structure. This tree structure makes X a fractal since a part of X is identical to itself. So the nice thing about the structure is that the modulus, the modulus of X is going to be the geometric mean of Y and Z. So if you plug in the general form of uh, dashboard and spring, we will have the modulus of X written in this form. So this is the time model. We are going to build the fractal mechanical network model starting from this elementary structure right here. So N, X is connected with Y1 and Z1. So X is going to be the mean of Y1 and Z1. And if we take a closer look at Y1, it actually has another fractal structure with X and Y2. So then y is, gonna, y1 is gonna be the mean of x and y2. Furthermore, the y2 also has a fractal structure with y1 and y3. Then y2 is gonna be the mean of y1 and y3. So recursively, we do this structure over and over again until y n minus one. And the same thing happens to the z sequence until z n minus one. So after all this stuff, we put them together so we will have from Zm to Zf, Z n minus 1 to Z2, Z1, X, Y1, Y2, up to Yn. All the sequence that forms a geometric series. If we only include the end member of Yn and Zm, the modulus of X can be represented in this way. So we plug in the scenario when Yn is a dash part and Zm is a spring. Then this is the final expression of the modulus of X. So in a nutshell, this hierarchical structure, which we refer to as fractal mechanical network, can produce a complex modulus written in this form. Now we recall that in this mathematical constant key model, we have a complex modulus in this form. You guys might have found the cat right here. By comparing these two, we can see that for an arbitrary gamma, which corresponds to an arbitrary Q. As long as gamma is a rational number, we can always find two integers m and n such that these two model lines are equivalent to each other. In another word, this fractal mechanical network model can produce the attenuation behavior of any constant Q model. So in this way, we basically provide a physical motivation to this mathematical model. And based upon this model, after a very non-trivial derivation, we end up with a physical acoustic wave equation to model the attenuation wave field. And we set up this wave equation starting from the vanilla version, which is the classic acoustic wave equation. And this is a Carmen equation in a non-attenuation year. And we add a pressure term to take into account the velocity dispersion, so one of the attenuating effect. Moreover, we add another correction term to incorporate the amplitude decay. So the non-attenuating equation plus the velocity dispersion plus the amplitude decay. All together, we got new visual acoustic wave equation. And the accuracy of this equation is uh, validated by comparing the theoretical and the numerical solutions. And uh, we do the comparison for both phase velocity and loss coefficients, which co corresponds to the two effects, respectively. And we show the case when uh, very brief attenuation, when Q is 100, 
strong <coughs> generation when Q is 10, and the realistic case when Q is married with 32 as a pure shell. So the velocity actually matches pretty good. And uh, moreover, the fitting of the loss coefficient is basically perfect. So this proves that our equation is pretty accurate. And the setup of this wave equation suggests that it can decouple the two attenuation effects. So this is the acoustic equation. And we can use it to simulate an acoustic wave field in non-attenuating media. So here is the source. And this is a snapshot. Here is the source. And here is the waveform. This is an acoustic non-attenuating case. And by adding the second term, the dispersion correction term, we will have a dispersion dominated wave field. And the snapshot is taken at the same moment. So we can see that the amplitude is the same, but we have a phase delay right here. Alternatively, if we only include this loss correct correction term, we will end up with a loss dominated snapshot. We can see that the phase is the same, but the amplitude is much smaller. And moreover, if we use the adapter full set, we have we will have the risk of acoustic snapshot as the phase of this one and the amplitude of this one. So we just demonstrate that our new wave equation can separate these two coupling effects. And finally, let's get back to this gas chimney model. And uh, so in this case, I will simulate the viscoacoustic acoustic wave field in this heterogeneous model. And this, the major feature of the model is that this gas chimney, which is characterized by the low velocity and the high attenuation right here. And uh, so for reference, we first show the acoustic wave, uh, acoustic wave field snapshot without attenuation. Uh, the background color is the velocity, and uh, I overlay the wave field on top of it. OK, so, and, uh, so this is the acoustic case, and we generate the risk of acoustic case. We can see that the uh, amplitude is much smaller than the previous one. And if we flip it, flip it back and forth, we can see that the waveform of the risk of acoustic case actually shrinks, which is due to the phase velocity dispersion in this case. Now also, we have the, uh, the uh, synthetic size drive for the acoustic case, and this is the risk of acoustic, risk of acoustic case. And the amplitude decay is pretty significant. So just like the chaotic feature I showed in the seismic data in the beginning of the talk, so now we basically have a tool to accurately model this higher attenuation structure. And some take-home messages. So in this study, we developed a hierarchical fractal mechanical network model to provide a physical motivation to the mathematical constant Q model. And on top of it, we derive a new physical acoustic wave equation to model the wave, to model the, the physical acoustic wave field. And this new equation has a strictly constant constant chain behavior. It has good accuracy and it has the capability to decouple the two attenuation effects. And at last I wanna give that to my wider key one for all the devices, the open source software K-Wave uh, and helped me get started with the simulation pretty quick. And also my uh, uh, friend Yasu who was a designer and helped me design many of the figures and also the slide. And that's all for my presentation. I'll be more than happy to have you. In the data, there's a lot of reflections early on yeah, right. that I don't see in your synthetics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, 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 I see your point. So, uh, I don't, well, I don't know what my point is. So don't, <laughs> I mean, but what do you... So, 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 uh, so in my opinion, this very strong reflection is basically due to the uh, velocity contrast because of the so-called gas hybrids, but we don't have this this kind of feature in this in, in this in this model, so we don't have the high reflection side here. But this, this is actually a pretty common thing in the real basis. All right. All right. We need to move on. Thanks, Wachi. All right. Thank you.